So today we're going to be talking about displacement and velocity. Uh, before I do that, uh, we're going to do a quick video uh, that's going to kind of set up our problem. Uh, this is from my uh, from my, my work uh, when I was trying to do uh, get my place on the football team, uh, and I, I hope I hope you enjoy it. Wow, uh, that guy that guy was fast. Um, let's see if uh, let's see if we can see that again and, and try to determine actually how fast uh, I was actually running. Um, to do that, we're going to have to pick a couple points. Let's go ahead and start the video again. So, so to do this problem, we're going to have to figure out two things. First of all, how far I've run during the amount of time that I've, that I've been running. So that's the displacement or the distance that I've run. And then we're going to need to figure out how long it took me to run that far or the, the time it took to run that. The reason is, is that Velocity, as it turns out, or, or um, is is defined as the displacement over the amount of time it takes to go that distance, or the distance over time. And we, we have a lot of uh, a, a lot of experience with velocity. We normally use uh, so a, a thing called speed. Speed it turns out as the magnitude of velocity, or it's it's velocity without a direction. Velocity is a vector that has a direction. But we know about speed. Speed is basically how far we go over a certain amount of time. We often use it when we're traveling in cars and we talk about how many miles per hour we're moving, which tells us how far we move in a certain amount of time. In this case, we're going to have to do a couple things. First, again, we're going to have to figure out how far we're moving. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of points to basically figure this out. Uh, the first point I'm going to take is going to be right there at, that, at, at this yard line. Um, uh, this is just a convenient place to start. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at that. And one thing we should notice is what the time is at this point of the video. That's 0 0.04 seconds uh, at that time, or 0 0.0, I guess, 0 0.06 or so whenever I finally, whenever I finally start moving again. Looks like it. It's so 0 0.06 seconds, 0 .06 seconds. And then our second point is going to be right here where we basically, um, where, where I cross the, the line again. And again, we're gonna have to look at approximately where that happens, that happens at about 0 .08 seconds. So it takes me about two seconds, I would say, to run that distance, so that's our time. And it, it, the distance is approximately, uh, let's see, um, is approximately uh, 15, about 10 yards or so, because these are, these are five yard markers. So with that information, we can go ahead and go over to our whiteboard and figure out what my velocity is. So if you watched my video on how to uh, solve a physics problem, you know, the first thing that we should do is draw a picture. And so let's go ahead and draw me. Oops. All right. There's me. And we're going to just show me running from one side to the other. So there's me at some later time. All right, so this is at our time t equals zero. And then I think we said that the time at the later one was about two seconds, right? Um, we also know that this distance from one side to the other uh, was uh, 10 meters. So let's go ahead and or, or 10, 10 yards. Um, uh, so d is equal to 10 yards. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and call 10 yards, 10 meters. It's pretty close, and for the types of calculation we're doing, it's going to be uh, as close as we need to get to. Um, but if you want to uh, actually know exactly how fast I'm running, you can um, do the correct conversion of, of yards to meter, because it was actually 10 yards. Okay. So now you see that I have uh, a picture that shows me the start of the running, the end of the running, the distance that I've run, the time at those two places. You see I have all the information really that I need to solve the problem. The next thing I want to do is define my coordinate system. This is very important because otherwise we're going to, um, we, we don't know actually how to deal with our distances and basically our positions at different times. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just call the point that I started right here, um, x equals zero. Okay, and what that means is that that's the zero point. That's the point at which I start. Right, that 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 um, that that we're going to measure everything in relation to. 
Um, so the first thing we want to actually find is our displacement, or delta x. So delta x is defined as just being x minus x0. In other words, uh, the, the, the position at the time that you're interested in minus the position that basically you started out at at time zero. So this is, this is a, the position at some, at some time, um, some, some uh, later time. And so we have basically two different positions that we started. We started at here. So this, it turns out, is our actual, is actually our x zero. That's actually the, the, the place that we started out at. And then this position over here is x. Now we know, again, from the distance between these two things that this is actually approximately 10 meters. And so our displacement, or our delta x, is just equal to 10 meters minus 0 meters, which is equal to 10 meters. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and box that. Great. So now we have the displacement. We have how far I've actually run. Uh, and again, I'm just taking this slowly to just so you have some idea of how we do this in, this, in a very um, specific and, 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 and particular way. As we go through uh, and do more complicated problems, this kind of rigor will help us out because we'll know how to solve any problem, basically. I'm going to just go ahead and separate these things, and then we're going to just go over here. And then what we're really interested in is my velocity. Now one thing to note about this this delta x is that so far it's actually not quite complete. What I've done is I've done just the, the magnitude of the displacement, but displacement is actually a vector and so it has a direction. And the direction points from x0 to x. And so the direction is actually this way. So that's that's actually the direction of delta x. Alright, so actually anytime I'm writing a, um, an, a, a solution to let's say um, what the displacement is, I should also include a direction. In this case, we just use the normal, um, uh, the normal kind of um, uh, compass directions where we, we tend to call um, you know, up, north, down, south, and then we do east and west. So I would just say that this is 10 meters east is our displacement. Okay, so now we want to do our velocity. It turns out velocity, which is also a vector, we're going to denote our vectors by actually putting little triangles or little little um, arrows over all of them. That just reminds us, the arrow basically tells us that, the, that it, there's a direction to the actual value that we're looking at. So now we have this v arrow, or the velocity. The difference between velocity and speed, it turns out, is just that uh, velocity has a direction, speed is just the magnitude of velocity. Uh, so we can go ahead and find the velocity, because the velocity is simply the change in x, or our displacement, over the amount of time it took, basically, to go through that. Um, so the time, so so basically the, the amount of time it took to move that full displacement delta x. Again, we know that uh, the time went from uh, the, the initial time was the initial time was uh, was equal to zero. Um, the final time we called two seconds, and so um, to get the total amount of elapsed time, we're just going to do two seconds minus zero seconds. All right. And so we can just say that this is equal to delta x, which is 10 meters over 2 seconds, which gives us a final answer, my velocity of 5 meters per second. You notice it's just meters on the top, seconds on the bottom, so that gives us 5 meters per second. And then the last thing we want to do again is have a direction. Again, the velocity was in the same direction as my displacement. It was to the right, and so we just want to put 5 meters per second east. And that's a very quick demonstration of how to actually uh, calculate displacement and velocity. I hope that answers some questions and helps you uh, go through some of the problems that I'm asking you to do. Uh, please email me, come to class, or do anything else, uh, any other way of contacting me, to try to get a hold of me and uh, enjoy figuring out things like displacement and velocity. Thank you.